Do you think uh, S&Cs that are um, new to, to rehab, you almost want to start with the recipe base so they can just sort of focus on maybe the coaching of technique rather than the prescription and then then you bring in the systems which is a little bit more an evolution of thinking and critical thinking and then ultimately the framework or do you just learn the best habits <laughs> at the start with, with framework and, um, yeah, what, what do you think is your best now that you've sort of experienced all three of those, which are probably quite common in the industry yeah. over the last sort of 10, 15 years, I imagine. Yeah, I, I think it's probably not a bad idea to start with a menu, a recipe. You know, if, yeah. if you are if you are super new to rehab and you've never run a rehab session, then you should defer to people that have that experience and they might have said, oh, look, here's probably a good starting point for most people with you know, a lower limb injury. Let's start with that type of session. And then your mm-hmm. next progression is this, this and this, right? That's probably a, a good starting point um, because if you truly have no experience, who are you to say that this is what you should do at session one, two, three, four? Because you don't have yeah. the, the knowledge and the like the exper- experiential evidence to say this is what an athlete can tolerate. Um, mm-hmm. But you've got to move away from that as fast as possible. Yeah. Because because what it does is it stops you critically thinking and mm-hmm. you know adjusting on within the session having to think about planning a session, you know, you're not thinking about those things, which will, if you don't start thinking about those things quickly, it'll delay your development. What would be the difference with return to performance that that athlete would typically, you know, um, uh, I guess experience or, or what would a coach, I guess, uh, what, over a year of work, what would they um, expect to result in terms of whether it be less reoccurrences or athletes return, returning back to and then giving you feedback that I really felt like I didn't take a couple of games to get back into my performance, actually hit the ground running for the first game as a performance. Yeah. Talk us through um, the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. I think like definitely that if we talk about that recipe based approach, that is not performance orientated. That is a, an approach that primarily would be based on avoiding a recurrence Mm -hmm. with, with relatively logical progressions to get an athlete to a, a let's call it a minimum standard. Yeah. And then it's, you know, the hope is that you would go into, you know, structured training and progressive training with the team before returning to play. Um, and mm-hmm. I suppose that period of time would, you know, somewhat prepare the athlete to perform when they actually get back to play. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think the, the menu based approach or the framework based approaches, that's where you can then tailor the back end of the rehab process towards preparing an athlete to perform. Handling specific injuries, how does that sort of change the, or uh, how does that um, take into account when you're, when you're applying the framework? Yeah, so mostly let's, let's say that 80% of rehab, well, let's call it 70, 80% of rehab could and does often look the same across most lower body injuries mm-hmm. and it's the 20 to 30 percent that gets you know hyper individualized or specific to that injury okay so making sure that 20 to 30 percent does get individualized in the right way ultimately then comes down to understanding what are the requirements of that injured tissue in running activities because that's the starting point. So you need to know, for example, that let's call it the calf complex, you know, let's use that as an example, that has to produce really, really high forces at all speeds of running. In terms of objective markers, if you've got a budget that's endless uh, and you're building a performance department, what are some of your, uh, you're putting a rehab program together, what are some of your, your must-haves, I guess, from a technology point of view? Uh, when you're dealing with injuries like your, your hamstring or your common prevalent sort of ones in NFL. Yeah, so I think in, yeah. there's, you know, if we just think, um, you know, lower limb injuries, I think it's really nice to have a set of force plates. Um, you know, they're, they're actually really quite affordable these days, you know, in terms of like an annual fee of somewhere around three to four grand, um, which, you know, for most organisations, you know, if it's important to you, you can get away with that. Um, 
you know, and because you can use that to do so many assessments, you know, whether that's your isometric maximal strength assessments, your ballistic isometric assessments, your jumping tasks, you know, looking at, you know, lower body power, looking at reactive strength, et cetera. You can do, you know, some hip isometric assessments, you know, there's almost endless what you can do there with a set of force plates, really. For something like a significant calf injury uh, and there's some time off running early days, what are some of your favourite strategies to, I guess, prepare them for later on that transition, like you said, with Bill Knowles from an ACL point of view where they were doing change of direction early um, in the pool or, or whether it be in the gym? What, what, so for that sort of mindset when it comes to uh, preparation to run while they're not running. Hmm. So I suppose it's a philosophy on how can we get the athlete to run before they actually run. Mm -hmm. So what if the, the calf Achilles complex works in a certain way and needs to produce a, a certain amount of force in running, how can we produce those forces in the gym environment, for example? Okay, so can we do, you know, maximal isometrics to produce, you know, really high peak forces? 